back to present ancient Chinese pantomime just for fun of it, Jello tonight. Back to present small Chinese type baby waiting for dessert. Chinese mother bling baby, Jello, famous Western delicacy. Poor Chinese baby. He unable to tell if this jello is straw belly, raspberry, jelly, orange, lemon, lime, apple, black raspberry, black jelly, or grape. Jello come in all ten flavors. Poor Chinese baby. But Chinese mother bling baby, great Western invention, spoon. Spoon was invented for eating jello. Baby find this is grape jello. Deep, dark, delicious new flavor. Chinese baby, very happy. So end ancient Chinese pantomime. Is pretty good commercial, no? In older advertisements, Racist language or stereotypical portrayals of diverse groups of people oftentimes appear obvious to present-day audiences. But what about racist advertising today? Are contemporary racist ads more difficult to identify? How and why are racially diverse people portrayed in paper and media advertisements? Looking for romance? It's here with Worldwide Lovers. Come meet our bachelors. Are the cameras rolling? I don't know what to do here. Okay, great. I'm Raj. I'm a Bollywood producer. I'm looking for the most delicious thing on the planet. You know, I was like the um, Sean Penn of Bollywood, you know. I did this film that uh, is very similar to Milk. We called it Kool-Aid. No, I'm telling the Girl Scouts honor. 172 films, yes. My favorite film that I've produced, I've produced so many films. So to say a favorite is like saying that one of your children should die. I'm looking for someone who just loves me in all the wrong places. What turns me on? Uh, I like Snooky and Jay Wow. <laughs> wow. I want to taste the sweetness on my lips. These are the Bombay. This ad was part of a series of online ads for Pop Chips, the snack that advertises itself as popped, never baked, never fried. The only time the product is shown in the ad is when the character is briefly shown eating pop chips after saying lips. But what is it about Indian culture that has anything to do with selling potato snacks? What in our society clears racial stereotyping as an acceptable and apparently funny form of selling com consumer products? According to Dictionary.com, people of color refers to a race with skin pigmentation different from their white race. For the purposes of this video, I use the term in reference to people who are either purposely portrayed as racially different or meant to blend in as darker skinned versions of white standards. So here are some contemporary examples before examining historical ads. The advertisements we see today in many magazines in the United States showcase models of different skin colors. But does that representation really address the disparity between lighter skinned and darker skinned models? Have we moved past the colonial legacy of a white standard in advertisement in the US? Look at these two images. Both are for the same company. One is darker skinned than the other. But what differences do you observe? Does the inclusion of a darker skinned model broaden the company's definition of female beauty? Here's another example. In this example, it is important to focus on how the woman of color appears next to the lighter skinned model. According to Lisa Wade of Occidental College, people of color are included in the media only to the extent that they are blended in to whiteness and in this case white standards of beauty. Of course, it may be argued that the lighter skinned model is compared to the darker skinned model, but a review of colonialism in the United States and a brief history of race in U.S. advertisement will demonstrate that people of color in U.S. advertisement have been inserted into white history, not the other way around. Representations of people of color in contemporary media advertisements resemble racist and classist colonial stereotypes that continue to conform to a discourse of white supremacy. 
While people of color have gained more representation in U.S. advertising within recent decades, the presentation of them in the media echoes colonial discourses of exoticism and Orientalism that are demeaning and can be destructive to people of color's sense of self. Looking at historical representations of people of color in U.S. advertisement sheds light on the legacy of racist stereotyping in ads today. Many ads into the 1970s blatantly portrayed people of color as racist stereotypes or characters. These representations mirrored racial hierarchies of U.S. society at the time. Although ads after the 1970s did not immediately stop using racism, ads before that time period demonstrate the clearest examples of racial stereotyping. More studies have been done comparatively on U.S. Black or African Americans in U.S. advertisement than any other racial minority. Early advertisements depicting black U.S. Americans portrayed them as dirty, intellectually inferior, and servile. Although Asians, South Asians, Latin Americans, and Native Americans received less representation in ads historically, several examples also echo racist stereotypes. For my first treat, everybody give the frito bandido their fritos corn chips. Gracias, gracias. Now, watch close how the hand is quicker than the eyes. Olé! How about that? The frito bandido make the magic. I turn your Fritos corn chips into my Fritos corn chips. There may be a Frito Bandito in your house, so buy two and hide... These advertisements portray racially diverse peoples as inferior and fundamentally different from the human ideal shown as a white man. Importantly, they are shown as distinct from white characters to convey not only the inferiority of other races, but also their inherent difference from whites. The distancing effect of people of color in advertisement further serves to make racist stereotypes appear natural by limiting the representation of people of color to stereotypical characters. Furthermore, these stereotypes were demeaning and would oftentimes mock or wrongly depict racially diverse cultures to imply their inferiority to quote-unquote white culture. <laughs> 